Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Holly and we're here in my inland Southern California zone 9B garden. And now is the time of year for me to start sowing seeds. So it's March 4th. So I'm gonna get started with some of my seeds today and then I'll sow some more in April, some more in May. And you know, we can talk about that when the time comes. So what am I doing today? So the big thing today is peppers uh, in addition to some other things so this year i'm going to be planting uh three hot peppers and one sweet pepper so i'm going to be sowing the dreaded carolina reaper uh, i think it's supposedly the hottest pepper in the world right now and this is by request of my husband and also another relative so we're going to see how this one goes and then to balance that out, we're going to have a milder pepper. This is uh, the poblano pepper, because I'm figuring if we make hot sauce with the Carolina Reaper, we don't want to only use Reapers. We want something mild to add to the hot sauce. And then we also use way too many red chili flakes in this household. So I'm going to be growing some cayenne peppers so we can make our own chili flakes. So those are the hot peppers. And then in terms of the sweet peppers, I'm going to be trying the gypsy hybrid. It's supposed to be really prolific, put out a lot of peppers, and it's supposed to survive heat better than bell peppers. So um, we're going to see we go through a lot of sweet peppers. And so I'm hoping I can get a bunch and then freeze them for the rest of the year. So those are our peppers. Uh, I'm also going to get some bush beans started. So I'm going to use up the rest of my dragon tongue beans Everybody on YouTube loves these. They, they are really good. They're really prolific. We got a ton last year and I'm, we're still eating them out of the freezer. So we're gonna do it again. Um, I'm also gonna be planting some basil. It gets very hot here, about 100 degrees for several months out of the year, but basil does survive that So with some shade. So I'm gonna plant some of that. I also grow loofahs every year. So this is what you can get like bathroom sponges out of. These are my own um, saved seed. And uh, we, we love these. We actually use them more for washing dishes and for cleaning around the house than we do in the shower. They're wonderful. And then it's nice to have an organic sponge that you can compost when they're done. Uh, summer would not be complete without tomatoes. So I'm gonna be growing four types of tomatoes. So um, a couple of determinant varieties that I've never grown before. And determinant varieties are just those that kind of produce all at once over a short period of time and then they're done. And I think that would be really good because our summers are too hot to grow tomatoes through the summer. So I'm hoping to get these started early and then hopefully they'll be done by the time the worst of the heat hits. So I've got one called Marglobe. I've obviously never tried. It's supposed to have good disease resistance and I got it as a sample packet when I bought something else. So we're gonna try it. And then I also have um, the Celebrity Hybrid, which is supposed to have good disease resistance too and also came highly recommended for my area. So we'll see. And then I have two indeterminate varieties here. So that's the type that just keeps growing and keeps producing until frost comes. Although here, basically they are toast by July or August. Um, but I have Early Girl, which is a hybrid, but it's one I grew up with. I really like the taste and I tried it last year and it did well and it produces early. So that means we can get tomatoes before the heat hits. And then another one that's been recommended to me by someone I really trust, uh, is called Costaluto Genovese. And um, it's an heirloom and it's supposed to do really well. And so we'll see if we can get some tomatoes before the heat hits. And then last but certainly not least, I'm gonna be growing Mousquet de Provence pumpkins. And I get these ones started early because once again, the heat just destroys them. So what I have to do is get them started early enough and hope that uh, we can get some fruit before the heat hits and then I just kind of nurse the plants along through the summer until the because the plants will live through the summer but it's too hot for any pollination so we won't get any new fruit probably until October off of these plants so I got to start them now 
So hopefully we can have fruit by Halloween and I'll have to wait. So that's what I'm starting with now. And then I'm going to be starting other things later on. Um, I'm mainly starting these now just because of the timing. And so uh, the soil's still a little bit too cold, but I want these plants to be big enough and strong enough to put out into the garden by April or May. So I can start a lot of seeds outdoors here, but the nights are still cold and we've had a particularly cold winter. So these, the, the, they're gonna go into these um, pots here. They're gonna go in the house for a little while. So what you can see here is I have a variety of pots. People ask me, what should they start their seedlings in? I mean, honestly, you can use cell trays, you can use old yogurt cups, old sour cream cups. Just always make sure there are holes in the bottom for drainage. You don't want your seeds to rot. Um, and I, ha I have a number of things here. I have, these are, <laughs> these are pots from the nursery that I just bought other things in. And then these are um, the Epic four cell trays from Epic Gardening. I'm not affiliated with uh, that company at all, but it's just something I really like to use. And one thing you'll see is I'm using pretty big pots. Like on YouTube, you'll see people using those tiny little cell trays. I use the tiny ones for our fall and winter garden because I'm growing way more plants, which takes up way more space. And they also tend to be smaller, but these plants get pretty big by the time I put them out and they grow pretty fast. And so that's why I like to have these bigger pots and bigger trays because, okay, I'm a lazy gardener, plus I have a really busy full-time job. So I don't wanna plant these in tiny little cells and then have to go out and pot them up and do a bigger pot maybe one or two times before I put them out in the garden. I, I just don't have the time and energy for that. So that's another reason why I put them in bigger pots. In terms of potting mix or soil, you can use a lot of different things. I mean, you, you always see people on YouTube saying, you can only use this one thing and it's the only thing that works. And I've been gardening since I was like, well, three years old. That's when my mom started me in the garden. And I've used a ton of stuff and a lot of it works. So you could use the seedling mix that you get at the store. Um, it's like specifically marketed for seedlings and it usually has no nutrition in it. It usually has no fertilizer. And that's okay. The seeds don't need fertilizer to get started. Everything they need is in the seed. But then within about two weeks, you'll have to start fertilizing regularly. Once again, I'm too lazy. I, I don't want to have to remember to fertilize. So I typically use a potting mix that I like from the store. And people say, oh, you can't use potting mix. I've been doing it for years. I actually get healthier seedlings than when I fertilize them. Um, and so this is just kind of a standard organic potting mix that I really like. You can also mix your own. I've done that too, where you, and you can see plenty of videos on that if you look it up on YouTube on how to make your own. But I, this mix I get at Costco is actually cheaper than I could make myself. So that's what I use. The other thing you might have noticed with the close-up shot is that everything's wet and there's actually water in the bottom of the tray. And that's because I'm pre-moistening the soil before I put the seeds in. This particular bag of potting mix has been sitting in my shed for a long time. And it's gotten so dry that it's become what we call hydrophobic. Um, that just means fear of water. So in this case, it means that it's so dry that it's having trouble absorbing water. And so I'm letting it soak for a while and that'll fix it. And so then once it's, you want this, you want the soil to be nice and moist for the seeds. If there isn't water, they're not going to sprout. So once I get this nice and soaked, then I'll, I'll put the seeds in. And then what I'm going to do, and I can show you this later, is I'm going to bring these in the house when I'm done. It's just, it's kind of messy and I'd rather do it outside. And I'm going to put them in my growing station where I have heat mats. They're mats you can buy online. They're still pretty cheap despite inflation and the peppers in particular like warmth it's going to help them germinate much faster but all of these will germinate faster if they have a little bit of extra heat so i'm, I'm going to put these on heat mats i do have grow lights as well which i'll show you um, and if the weather's warm enough i may not use the lights much so again i live in southern california what we think is cold is not what the rest of the country thinks is cold. So 
if it's warm enough, I will do what I lovingly call the seedling shuffle. And I will, in the morning, pull out all these trays, put them in the sun, and then at night, I'll take them and I'll put them in the house. And seedlings do really well with, say, up to 16 hours of light. Our days are pretty short still. So when I put these back in the house every night, I'll turn my grow lights on for, you know, another few hours so that they have about 14 to 16 hours of light. And then I'll go and I'll do it all over again the next day. But if we have a cold, dark, rainy day, something like that, I'll just leave them in the house with the grow lights on and, you know, they'll do fine. And I'll just, I'll just keep doing this. It's kind of a, kind of a, you know, like I said, a little bit of work, but I enjoy it. I'll keep doing this till these are ready to go out. And probably most of these I'm going to put out into my garden in mid-April and then the peppers probably mid-May or so. Um, right now, you might ask, why don't I just plant them directly in the ground now? Well, if you slowly pan over, you'll see that since we grow year round, my garden is still absolutely full <laughs> of cool season vegetables. So there is no room in the garden right now to just plant anything directly out. And honestly, the soil is gonna be still a bit too cold and the nights are gonna be a bit too cold for these warm season plants to thrive. They're just, they're just not gonna do well. And even if they do sprout in my garden, they're probably gonna be eaten by something. And so I like to get them big enough that they can survive when I put them out because we have a lot of predators here who like to eat my plants, even if I cover them up. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm pretty excited to be getting the summer season started, even though it's only March. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll take you inside in a little bit and show you my indoor setup. So this is my indoor growing station um, for when it's too cold outside for my seedlings. So what you can see here is this is just a metal rack that I bought on Amazon and put together. And then on the top two levels, I have these LED grow lights and they're hanging from chains. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to lower the lights to be closer to really small seedlings. And then as they grow, I can raise the lights up. And I mentioned that these are LEDs, but they don't have to be. So you could just use regular cheaper shop lights. That's totally fine as well. Another thing I wanted to point out is I have them daisy chain. So if I just need to use one level, I can. I can just unhook it and then I'll just use this lower level. And then uh, if I want both levels, I can plug that in there. Another thing that you'll see here is that I have these heat mats that I mentioned when we were outside. And so you just put your trays of pots on them and they will keep the soil warm, which will improve germination. And you'll see that I have basically um, a paper bag under this one and then I have some cardboard under this one. And that's just because with these open racks, I noticed that the heat would escape from the bottom and it wouldn't keep the seedlings as warm as I wanted it to. But when I put something underneath, it kind of keeps some of the heat in and it's not escaping through the bottom. And then another thing is that I just have everything um, connected to this power strip and I'll plug the heat mats in here as well. And there are power strips that have um, timers built in so that they'll turn the lights on in the morning, turn them off at night, if that's something that you don't have time to do. I've thought about getting that, but um, I just haven't done it yet. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about the heat mats is that you can get heat mats with thermostats. And so you can choose the temperature that you want. These ones are just regular, plain, not fancy ones. They don't have a thermostat built in, but they do fine for me and I haven't had any problems with them. So this is where I'm gonna bring my seedlings in and keep them in here until they germinate. And then if need be for on cold days, I'll keep them in here as well. The only other thing to think about is if you have any pets in the house that might get into this. So we have two rather young cats who are very curious. And so um, that's the reason why I have the, the sections where I'm gonna put my seedlings up top 
And then I'm thinking I'm going to have to create some barriers over on the side as well because they can get into just about anything. So keep that in mind if you have pets in your house as well. So here you have it. Here's my growing station. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the comments below, let me know when are you going to start your seedlings in your area? Because obviously, obviously it's different depending on where you live. And what's your growing setup like? What are you doing? Do you have a grow station? Are you going to do everything outside? Let us know below. Thanks very much. And I'll see you all next time.